my work at the Department of Education is helping schools and districts implement the Safe and Supportive Schools Act. And that act, that statute in law, looks at districts to be providing evidence-based social-emotional learning pre-K to 12th grade. And that's a big, vague statement. And so our role is helping schools implement that and do that well. And we found that schools and districts were looking to us for providing guidance. So we convened a group um, initially of about 30 different stakeholders that were part of our council that advises our work, that were from the university community, from schools and districts, some districts that have standalone social emotional learning standards already, some districts that were developing them, uh, and some professionals in the field who just want to see us be more intentional about this work. Uh, they worked for about a year developing what we're calling social emotional learning competencies, which include learning goals, uh, benchmarks, and sample activities. They are grade banded and they're based on the Castle 5 competencies. And so you'll see, for example, under self-awareness, there's a set of four learning goals. And under each of those learning goals, there are different activities and skills that we would want to see students learning. We grade banded them because unlike math or reading, it's not a, okay, I've mastered addition, now I can move on to subtraction, or I've mastered multiplication, now I can move on. It's really about the growth and development for students over time. And so we also, as we were developing these, uh, the stakeholder group was really cautious about, we can't just put these out without some guidance about how do you do this well, um, especially around how do you assess students. And so right now we're sort of in the second phase of our work. We completed the, the framework, the competencies, sent them out for a cultural review with the Great Lakes Equity Center, which is based out of uh, Michigan, I believe. We sent them out to numerous national experts from CASEL and from other states who already have uh, guidance from their departments of education and other national expert uh, organizations, uh, like the American Institutes for Research and the National School Climate Center. And now we're developing guidance on what would you do with these as a school or district. So we're developing implementation guidance. What does it look like to implement social emotional learning well? It's professional development guidance because we really feel that focusing on the adults in the building and not just the teaching staff or the administrators or the su school support staff, but all of the adults in the building. What type of professional development do they need to support our, our young, uh, young people? We're also developing assessment guidance because what we don't want to see are students being penalized or schools or teachers being penalized for how their students are performing related to social emotional learning because it really is about growth and development. And so developing that and writing that guidance and then also aligning it to the academic standards because we really believe that it needs to be both embedded instruction and explicit instruction in the school day and how can you support that. Uh, we want to connect it to the revised early learning childhood indicators so that a district can truly serve their students from birth to uh, 18 or 21 as they age out of their programs. And that we're connecting them with the special education programs and out of school time programs as well that are being funded and supported through the Minnesota Department of Education. And so we are in the phase of developing that guidance. Our hope is that they will be released in the fall as a kind of a packet. Um, and it'll be voluntary guidance because schools and districts are asked to do evidence-based social emotional learning. And as Dale pointed out, CASEL is not the only framework and even a Minnesota tailored set of guidance based on the CASEL framework incorporating restorative practices isn't the only framework out there. And so we, we acknowledge that, but we are trying to provide guidance to help schools and districts that want to do this uh, not have to start from scratch and do it on their own. So that is where we are. We're still looking for people to come into the process. Um, we've only started a few of these work groups that are writing. Um, some of you in this room I recognize are involved in that work. And so if it's something you're interested in, definitely touch base with me afterwards and I can get you connected to our work groups. Um, I think what our biggest challenge is is gonna be how we communicate and how we share this with schools and districts so they understand that they're doing a lot of these things already in the classroom. What we're asking them is to be intentional and look at where they may have areas they wanna grow and areas they may wanna focus on or may wanna add in and how do they do that well. Um, and again, in a, in a mix of embedded instruction, direct instruction, and then school-wide initiatives or district-wide initiatives. And how can they be supportive of that? And how can we at the state be supportive of that work as well?